Hey everyone, and welcome back. Today we're going to be reviewing Kaze and the Wild Masks for the Nintendo Switch. Now this is a 2D platformer that is inspired by the Donkey Kong Country series. And at $29.99, it does make it among some of the more expensive indie options on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Now, does it live up to its inspiration? Well, today we're going to find out. Now, just before we get started, don't forget that if you like this content and you want to see more, please hit the like button. It's the best way to support the channel and subscribe if you aren't already. Now, the first thing I want to make clear is not only is this game inspired by the Donkey Kong Country series, but I would say that it is heavily inspired by that series, even more so than a recent game we reviewed, which was Stitchy in Tukey Trouble. Because this game doesn't only borrow some of the mechanics, but it actually tries to copy the overall formula that made the Donkey Kong Country series so popular and such a great 2D platforming franchise. Now, don't get me wrong, I have no problems with imitation. I've always said it, if you're going to imitate someone, at least imitate the best. The only thing is that when you decide to imitate a series so heavily, you will obviously be compared to them on a regular basis, so you have to make sure that your product stands up. And the Donkey Kong Country has some pretty big shoes to fill. But you know what? This rabbit just might do it. So as I said, rather than a gorilla, this time you are playing as a humanoid rabbit. And just for a warning, the storyline is quite a bit darker than your average Donkey Kong Country storyline, with a lot more on the line for our hero rabbit. But just in most traditional 2D platformers, this game is not about the storyline, it's all about the gameplay. You'll only get splashes of storyline here and there. Now your basic set of abilities will feel very familiar as well, with a simple jump ability, a spin attack, a dive attack, and finally, if you hold the attack button while in the air, you will slow your descent by spinning your ears, very similar to Dixie Khan's ponytail. Now, other than this basic set of abilities, all the other abilities that will be given to you throughout the game will either be through the environment or one of the wild masks that come from the title of the game. Now, these different masks will grant you abilities, breaking up the average platforming of this game by giving you one of the following abilities. One mask will grant you flight and give you the ability to launch a projectile. A second one will give you the ability to swim and even give you a dash spin attack. A third one will even give you the ability to air dash and wall jump, very reminiscent of the Mega Man X series. And a last mask will give you the ability to double jump and will turn the stage pretty much into an auto runner, which is almost a perfect fill-in for the minecart stages from its inspiration series. Now, not only that last ability feels borrowed from its inspiration, the first two abilities are also borrowed from various Donkey Kong Country games, and if you've played through the entire series, will feel very familiar. Only the third mask, or what's called the Tiger Mask ability, will feel completely original to the Donkey Kong Country series, although, as I said earlier, it seems to borrow from another classic series. Now, before we go any further, it might ruin slightly the direction of this review, but I'm going to tell you right away that although this game is borrowing all these abilities, I do not want to sound like a negative aspect of the gameplay. It is rather an homage to these classic series because this game blends them and uses them in almost a perfect fashion. And if we continue on with even the level designs, we'll feel once again very familiar with checkpoints placed throughout the stages almost perfectly right before a difficulty spike. And every obstacle and object in the game almost feels perfectly placed and shows that this game must have been play tested to death because every obstacle, every enemy, every item almost feels perfectly placed. There are even secondary objectives that once again will feel very familiar. Collecting the letters to the hero's name, Kaze, is a secondary objective available in pretty much every stage other than the boss stages. And there are even two hidden bonus zones in pretty much, once again, every stage other than the boss levels. To complete one of these bonus stages, you'll have to complete various objectives, such as killing a certain number of enemies within a time frame or collecting a certain number of objects. Now, at this point, this is where Kaze actually does some original things that are almost upgrades to the original inspiration Donkey Kong Country series. And honestly, it's upgrades that probably should have been integrated into that other series for years, but have been maintained through simple tradition. 
Number one, in this game, lives are gone. You can try stages as many times as you need. The only thing that will limit you is just how determined you are to make it to the next checkpoint. Number two, those hidden bonus stages can actually be reattempted as many times as needed with a simple hit of a button rather than being propelled out of the bonus stage and having to backtrack later in your adventure. There is even a casual mode to the game that has been added that gives you extra checkpoints per levels and also extra hit points for your main character for those people that aren't quite up to the normal challenge. Now add to all this animations that are stellar and vibrant, controls that are nice and crisp, and a soundtrack that is very, very enticing, although not as perfect as its inspiration series. As a fan and lover of 2D platformers, it is very hard for me to find downsides to this game. And even one of the original downsides that I had noted to this game has already been patched out. The original sensitivity on the dive attack seemed a little too high, meaning that it went off at some awkward points. But since this review is coming out almost a month after release of the game, well, that has already been patched out of it. Now, I could nitpick and point out that in the last levels of the game, the checkpoints did seem to be a little too spaced out. However, I think that they are trying to keep with the traditional of the Donkey Kong Country series and make the last levels of the game extremely challenging compared to the average level. The actual only point that I would maintain that did disappoint me a little bit about the game is the overall length of the game. Because at $30, I was expecting there to be a few more stages to the overall experience. But with this level of quality and polish put into the gameplay, I can almost forgive this point. Now, just before we get to the verdict, as a closing comment, I'm really hoping that the developer keeps supporting this game and might even eventually offer some free DLC because it could actually completely moot that last point by simply adding in one extra world with maybe a dozen new levels. But even without that, this remains a phenomenal game. So now with all that out of the way, let's move on to the verdict. Now, if this is the first time that you're watching one of my reviews, just to let you know, I do not give a numerical score. I give an overall statement that recommends whether or not you should purchase this game. And if you want to see what all those different statements that I use are, you can look down below in the description of the video. And Kaze and the Wild Mask, in my opinion, is going to be getting a hidden gem rating. Basically, if you're looking for a traditional 2D platformer that offers quite a level of challenge, Kaze and the Wild Masks should be a definite top contender on your list. And even if you're not open to quite that level of challenge, well, there's a casual mode that will make this pretty accessible for any type of gamer. And although $30 is quite a high asking price, I've got to say that seeing the quality and polish, as I said earlier, that they put into this game, I can see why they're asking for that level of commitment. And what I find most amazing overall is that when I researched this developer, this seems to be their first release, at least the first release I could officially find online. And if this is this developer's starting point, I'm going to be keeping my eyes wide peeled for what comes in the future. And just as a last point, if you're wondering why this review is coming out a month after the release of the game, well, number one, I unfortunately didn't get a review copy of the game, so I had to buy it day one as everyone, and it did take me a couple of weeks to finish it. Secondly, since there were a lot of day one reviews, I just didn't want this video to get completely squashed with all the other ones that came out previously. And lastly, I think this game really deserves a lot of attention, and by now, the algorithm has moved on from those original reviews and gives a much higher likelihood that more people will see this video and might actually pick up this game because this is a game I want supported to the max because for selfish purposes, I want a sequel. Now, as usual, don't forget that if you did like this content and you want to see more, please hit the like button. It's the best way to support the channel. Also, subscribe if you aren't already. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.